Good afternoon. Welcome to Orbit Talk Series. Uh, we are very blessed today to have the group CEO of A Asia, uh, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez. You had to check my name, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, <coughs> So we are lucky here today because uh, we, we, are, we, we have the opportunity to discuss and to talk to Yambo Bhagatan Sri in terms of uh, looking at Asia transformation uh, into becoming the ASEAN leading super app, uh, among other things. And uh, part of the Orbit Talk series, uh, we would definitely would we want uh, the audience today to participate and engage with our discussion. Uh, we have one hour today to discuss about all these uh, topics and matters. And uh, I do not want to uh, waste any time. I uh, just want to start uh, with uh, Tansri in terms of uh, asking you, uh, how are you feeling today? Okay, uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, inviting me, uh, Rizwan, and to Orbit and uh, MDEC. <clears throat> it's good to be here. How am I feeling today? Well, I've just ate eaten too much okay. uh, at an Indian restaurant with the chairman of MDEC. Uh, but feeling good. Uh, we've had a very tough year. I mean, that's obviously well known, well documented. Um, but we, you know, it's now coming up December. We've obviously had some good news on vaccines. I think uh, therapeutics is getting better. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, testing. Uh, we, we hope for some, some great breakthroughs in testing where you can breathe and get a yep. COVID test in 30 seconds. So, yep. you know, 2020 has been really a horrific year, um, especially for airlines and people in the tourism business. But uh, we're hoping for better things in uh, 21. So feeling a bit more optimistic, Fantastic. feeling a little bit better. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, let's, let's get straight to the, to, the, to the elephant in the room. Yeah. Okay. Your, your prowess in terms of entrepreneurship, your, your bold strategy, uh, and, and the e-issue brand as a, a low-cost uh, airlines is definitely an inspiration to many. Uh, but what I want to go to now is unlike the favorable circumstances back in 2001 when you started mm. e-issue, mm. what's the plan for e-issue as an airline business mm. Mm. going forward uh, given the current circumstances? Okay, firstly, when you said elephant in the room, I thought you were referring to me. No. <laughs> I am getting smaller, uh, unlike the chairman of MDEC. But um, let's go through uh, your first point. I wouldn't say 2001 after 9-11 was a favorable well, yeah. time to start an airline. Precisely. Uh, we have always lived through crises. And it, uh, in some ways, there's a lot of similarity. Of course, it's far, far greater precisely in COVID now than it was uh, after 9-11. But after 9-11, there was this, oh, who's, everyone's going to be afraid of flying. Yes. Because of terrorism, because of huge amount of checks, and uh, people predicting the end of aviation. Uh, and, and of course, after 9-11, there was a hell of a lot more security. Mm. We had longer queues, longer wait time. And uh, <clears throat> you know, there was this huge, uh, a lot of people telling me this is the wrong time to go into into um, into Air Asia. Yes, but I mean, I knew that flying was is a commodity, and it's become globalization has made flying uh, very important. Uh, people's life through industrial revolutions, of which 4.0 is one. I know people now talk about 5.0, but that's made people got more leisure time, mm -hmm. more travel. When I was young, we never had holidays. Now, families have holidays quite regularly. Yeah. So. Uh, it was not a favorable time. And we we're also competing against state-owned airlines. Mm. Uh, recently in Parliament, you know, I think for the first time, the Malaysian public saw that Malaysian Airlines has received 28 billion ringgit uh, since AirAsia has been in existence. Uh, so it was tough competing against um, airlines, uh, a tough environment. Uh, and so while I do admit this is much tougher, in many ways, it was also tough in 2001 because we had no brand. No one knew us. We had two planes. We had no money. Sounds familiar, actually, like now. <laughs> um, but the leasing only, of aircraft. Only, yeah. only, we had a, only we have a brand. And uh, 
you know, I joke about it, right? We started in 2001 with two planes. Yep. We grew to 245, and we're back to two planes now, right? So it's like snakes and ladders. You know, you go all the way up to 97, hit that square, and then you go down to three. But, <clears throat> you know, just like 2001 with security issues, now they're going to be health issues. Yeah. There's going to be more protocol. They're going to be testing, need vaccinations, et cetera. But people will get used to it. Mm. Flying's going to come back. I think there's going to be a huge amount of revenge flying. I think AirAsia is in a better position than most airlines because we are 50% domestic. Yep. We, the rest of us is regional. So mm. we're not dependent on intercontinental flying. We're not dependent on business class and first class. More likely, someone is going to fly to Phuket or Langkawi than they are to Los Angeles Precisely. or London. <clears throat> um, so, you know, we've taken this opportunity to restructure our business, um, uh, recost it, and uh, we're hoping for borders to open again. Uh, we think within the next six months, uh, things will be beginning. Uh, McKinsey sent me a report just now where they said in America, they believe Q3 life will go back to the way it was. To I mean, that's, yeah. that's the first time I've seen a report like that. Mm. Um, we saw our Minister of Science and Technology talking about 70% immunization. Um, so at least there is that tunnel that you can see the end. Um, you know, for many, many months, we didn't know where that tunnel was going. Precisely. Right? Uh, we've got better. We understand public health. We understand social distancing, washing hands. So, yeah, we're in a much better position. So AirAsia will be uh, ready for a, a post-COVID world. Uh, we ourselves are very, very digitally orientated. So we're ready for, you know, health forms on apps or contactless travel. Um, and so, you know, I think the competitive environment may be better as well. So we're looking forward to 2021. Fantastic. That's, that's really refreshing to, to, to learn that this is a period of transition mm. for airlines like AirAsia. Mm. Uh, and, and talking about transition, it is always the, the motto of AirAsia Group to be uh, always about no frill. It's always about value-driven and, and synergy. Hence, now you have the AirAsia Group uh, now having the super app. Mm. So to share with us, why super app route rather than uh, other way of doing stuff? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think the first thing to say is actually we were one of the first beneficiaries of MDEC. We were one of the first beneficiaries of MSE. It's, a, it's not a well-known fact, mm. but as all of you get excited about these digital unicorns, we may be a granddad unicorn, but we were <laughs> one of the first unicorns out there because... AirAsia benefited from MSE. Mm. Uh, we were the first airline in ASEAN, uh, dare I say, probably in Asia, to start selling on the internet. On, yeah, right? Uh, no one bought tickets on the internet before, before AirAsia. That, yeah. We painted our planes airasia.com. We supported MSC. We were big believers in this digital revolution that, that Tun started. And, uh, you know, until today, 85% of our business is through our own website. Uh, so we promoted, and remember at the time, 19 years ago, when we came out with the internet, not many people had credit cards. Precisely. We didn't have form. We didn't have loads of different ways of payment. Uh, we had to do, we, we came out with, you know, pay at 7-Eleven, mm. pay at Maybank, over the counter. If you don't have a card, you bought the ticket and you had six hours to do it. So we were the pioneers of digital innovation, mm. including fintech. So, and then when social media came, you know, we were the first to embrace it. Yep. Uh, and, and we have over 30 million social media accounts at, in various countries. Myself, until recently, because I took a stand against Facebook and Twitter, I had, you know, 1.5 million followers on, on Twitter and almost a million on Facebook. Uh, so we are a digital company. And I think many people forget it. They just see us as an airline. Yep. But really, we were a very tech-driven company. And even within the airline, we drove a lot of innovation we were the first airline to have paperless cockpit. Mm. Uh, we, we were the first kind of airline to go into the cloud, uh, etc. So the transition is not as great um, as you may think it is because we're already a kind of a digital company, right? We, 
you know, I've been driving over the last two years and, and we invest in a company called Eco. I'm not a believer in email. I'm a believer in collaboration software. And so we were testing out Slack. We mm. were testing out um, uh, Facebook Workplace, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I'm very anti-email because I think it's static. It's uh, people, you know, there's a lot of email spam and collaboration is on, on the top, Slack and apps like that. And Correct. we invested in one called Eco. Uh, so um, uh, I think, I'm sure it's in your questions, you're kind of saying it in a nice way, but you know, how do you go from an airline into a super app? And like everyone out there, they're like saying, how the hell are these guys going to compete with Grab and all these other, yes. all these other companies, right? Yeah. But 18 years ago, the same people were saying, how are they going to compete against Malaysian Airlines, Singapore Airlines, uh, Thai, Garuda, et cetera. And there were the same doubting Thomases then, right? Yep, yep. Uh, so I see so many similarities we can talk about later. But the first instance is to say that it isn't such a quantum leap. Yeah. We, we have data. We have uh, um, ingested and cultivated data over the last 18 years. And so we're taking a natural extension. Now, you go back to your point about providing value. We think us coming into this space is a wonderful opportunity. We think restaurants don't get value. Mm. They're paying uh, food delivery companies huge amounts of their profits. Uh, they don't have flexibility on their menus. They don't own the data. And so we, we think that here's an opportunity for us to give more freedom more choice to, to restaurants. Mm. Uh, we think the, the whole financial services industry, uh, which includes insurance, mm. um, is not geared towards the common man, which is the same thing we felt when we started AirAsia. How many people flew? The, the statistic that got to me to start AirAsia with Cameroon was only 6% of Malaysians flew. That was like, wow, you just assumed everyone flew, yep. right? And if you go and look at, you know, we, we walk around this wonderful office and you see the UN talking about financial inclusion, it's a real problem. We all think everyone's got a bank account, everyone's got credit facilities, everyone can go and get a loan and start a business. SMEs is the engine of growth for ASEAN. Precisely. But how easy is it to get liquidity vis-a-vis -vis in America where it's so much easier to get capital? Mm -hmm. So we think the things that we are doing fits into the AirAsia way of value. Um, so we have a, a triangle there, uh, fintech, e-commerce, and logistics. Mm. These are three things which are derivative of what we're already doing in AirAsia. Whether we succeed, yeah. you know, time will tell. Yeah, who, definitely. Who, who knows, right? Yeah. And I think nine out of 10 people will say, we're crazy. <laughs> um, but They've been saying that for 20 years about me anyway. <laughs> so what's I, new? Def definitely. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this, this is part and parcel of uh, sharing with the larger public in terms of how Asia is trying to use that super app yeah. uh, and make sure that they understood the value proposition. Mm. Because uh, take an example for, for Malaysia, the, there's a lot of good companies that's involved in innovation and fintech, but the level of awareness, especially amongst the micro SMEs mm. and the B40s, mm. this is another concern that we have. Mm. And what you said just now in terms of how Asia changed that perception, mm. uh, making everybody able to fly, mm. this is the same kind of rationale that I've been thinking about when you talk about the super app. Yeah, so it's really great. I mean, this is a great question. I assume it's a question, <laughs> um, but branding um, is so critical. There's so many great things. Orbit, yeah, you know, how many people know about it? Um, foam, etc. So, I always tell startups, um, and we believe we're a startup. Of course, we have a brand called AirAsia, but in everything we're doing in the digital field, we're mm. a startup. Mm -hmm. um, but too many great ideas, no one ever finds out about them. Mm. And one of the biggest faults of startups is they invest too much in the product and technology, 
and they forget about telling people about it. Yeah, the story's that important. Right? So, and I, you go back to AirAsia 19 years ago. When we started, we had to educate a market on how to check in, mm. how to fly, because they never flew before. Yep. I used a comic called Ujang um, to educate people about checking in, about how to use the internet, how to buy a ticket. And, and you've hit the nail on the button. That's what we're good at. Okay, we may not have the fanciest tech in the world, but we'll be able to reach people and provide a service for people. Um, and we haven't started that whole branding exercise. Yeah. And it's a much tougher exercise for us because AirAsia is an airline. Yes. While I keep telling my staff that Amazon started selling books and now it's doing cloud space, Amazon is a neutral name. AirAsia is an airline. Yes. Right? So, but if I go out and start you know, Rizwan.com, it's going to cost me a trillion dollars to go and build that brand. Uh, so it's easier to use the brand that people know and re-educate them to say, hey, we're doing other things as well. Um, and so AirAsia, you know, the super app is a very bastardized word, but let me tell you what we're trying to achieve. One is we want to give value. Okay. We want to be inclusive. Um, and we want to educate, right? Um, we think the engine of, of growth is SMEs. Uh, we think big pay, our uh, fintech product, is about the common man, but also about SMEs, mm. right? If you think how much an SME has to pay for remittances, how much they have to pay for banking, uh, what is their access to the capital market? Yep. It's really tough, it is. you know? I mean, it's super tough for AirAsia to borrow 10 cents right now. Um, <laughs> le you know, leave alone, a, a, you have to mortgage everything, including your first child. So we think uh, we will do to financial services what mm. we did with AirAsia. Okay. So the super app really is, um, one, travel-led, because okay. that's what we're good at. And then we add what we're second good at, which is logistics. Okay. Right? So our aim once all the borders are open, that you can order something in Korea and it will be delivered to you by the next day, right? Uh, not three or four days later or you don't know when it's coming, yeah. right? Yep. Uh, which is the present case from some e-commerce operators. Uh, when you, uh, so we will go into e-commerce and delivery, uh, but logistics is the key. And because we have 245 planes, because we fly everywhere, we think cross-border logistics, yep. we have an advantage. And then we'll add last mile and first mile to it. Um, we're not an e-commerce specialist. We will focus on what we think we're good at. We mm -hmm. think we can do a good, reasonable job on food delivery. We think we can do a great job on fresh food delivery. Mm, yes. So if you order fish from Saba, we hope to give it to you on the same day, right? Fresh fish. Uh, or from Thailand, or for Chinese to order fish from, from Sabah, mm. et cetera. And then travel retail is what we're good at, whether it's beauty products, et cetera. But the real important thing is logistics. Yep. And then we have um, FinTech in our super app, yep. remittance, bill payment, payment options. Yeah. Uh, we hope to have wealth management, et cetera. Because I think wealth management, again, how many people in the M40, B40, can invest in gold, could invest in, in a cash fund, etc. And then insurance. We think Malaysia and Southeast Asia is very underinsured. Definitely. Um, and finally, you know, if I know what I knew 20 years ago, I may not look like this. <laughs> uh, we, we hope we can introduce people uh, to be a little bit more inclusive about health. We're a very young nation, mm. and so we don't take health very seriously uh, until it's too late. You know, so that's what our super app is going to be, underpinned by our loyalty program, mm -hmm. big rewards, yep. underpinned by a superior payment system, and single sign-on. Um, so that's the aim. We're on version one of the super app. We're not going to really start promoting it till we have version two. Yep. So by about um, January, we'll begin to start telling people, you know, AirAsia is more than just an airline. Okay, that's, that's very interesting because the premise of the super app now is still based on the airline business where you talk about travel, logistic. Mm. Just being a little bit more, con I mean, 
trying to become the devil advocates. Mm. So let's say, for example, the business airline takes a longer time for mm. it to come back. Mm. Okay, so let's say McKinsey is wrong. Mm. Let's say it takes maybe another 24 or 36 months for it mm. to come back. Mm. So, would you consider a different core for the mm. super app rather than airline yeah, logistics? Well, yeah, well, I mean, airline would, ne I mean, OTA would never be a core anyway. Okay. Because how often do you travel, right? You're mm. not traveling every day, unlike Grab or Gojek, where there's, there's a huge velocity there, yeah. right? The airline is the OTA, and now we're selling other airlines, you know, Turkish Airlines, yeah. Tata, Lion, all, all are selling on our platform. We're the first airline to sell our competitors. Um, we're building up our own hotel supply. Uh, we are big believers in health tourism, which has never really been promoted anywhere. Yep. But that's a core because people know us. But really, the, the high velocity projects are uh, the loyalty part, yep. fintech, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And, and they survive whether the airline uh, is active. I mean, the airline industry and yeah. the tourism industry is active. Correct. But I go back to the point, it won't take 36 months. Okay. Um, otherwise, I really will be a very thin man. <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, we know the vaccine is there. We know people are getting used to it. Mm. Um, and as I said, you know, better us than SIA right now because we're not flying intercontinental and we're not relying on business travel. And, and you know, business travel will take time. Obviously. Because of technology, Zoom has become a, a, a fantastic replacement for traveling. Yes. Um, and apart from the fact that um, of COVID, I think businesses will say, well, it's much cheaper to to do a Zoom call, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think the whole working environment is going through a cultural revolution. We, we walk through orbit and many people are working from home. Mm. Uh, I still think uh, working from home can be very, very productive, but you need to get people in the same place. Mm. I, 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 you know, I fight very hard in AirAsia. You know, they have all this team A, team B separation, but we are a people company. Mm. We need to be together. Humans need to congregate and be together. And so while I'm digressing a little bit, I just back AirAsia will be easier to bounce back because we're not in the business segment. We're not in the first class and yeah. uh, business area and we're not flying into continental. Okay. You know, as I said, more likely you fly to Langkawi then go watch a UFC match in Los Angeles, yeah. right? Um, or, or fly to Anfield to watch, you know, substandard football at, on Liverpool. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we, we think we're in a good position there. Okay. I mean, uh, the, okay, let's, let's focus on the, the, the FinTech side where I, I see that this is where Asia is going to use FinTech as part of the skill plan mm. to grow the business. Mm. Okay, share with us whether largely is it going to be an organic development of the fintech itself? Mm. Because mm. like like big pay, for example, it's owned by, by, by Asia. Uh, but is there going to be an opportunity for, because I represent fintech association. Mm. So mm. there's a lot of fintech company in Malaysia and ASEAN that would love the opportunity to actually partner with a company like AASH. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I do love this interview, by the way. Uh, what, I, what I've said to my team is, what are we good at? We're good at marketing and branding. Mm. What we're good at, we've been partnering and joint venturing all 19 years, whether in Thailand, Indonesia, whatever. We may not have the best technology and the best ideas. And so what I'm hoping for is, in, in some ways, like the App Store, that we open our platform mm. for people to collaborate and we bring traffic to you. True that, yeah. Right? Um, so, you know, we've been talking to many great companies from Ringgit Plus to to uh, Gold Funds to, to all these kind of things. And it's, it's not about acquisition for us, it's about partnering, mm. bringing skill sets that we don't have. And what we're good at is marketing and branding and bringing traffic. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, very much. We're open to that. Fantastic. Um, we have, in a strange way, you know, we've never acquired an airline bar yeah. one. Yeah. We've done it organically. So far, all our digital businesses have been organic. I've mm. been acquiring people. Yes. 
I, I focus on the people side to build the businesses. Um, but we're now in a position where we're ready to talk to, to people um, in fintech, in blockchain, in e-commerce, uh, in, in data science all over. Because we, we've got our act together, mm. right? In many ways, one of the benefits of COVID is we didn't, we didn't put our head in the sand and cry and you know, just keep asking for help the whole time. Um, we thought when you're at home and you can't do anything, it's a great time to think and plan. And, yes. And Zoom and all these things were great. And uh, we were A-B testing. Tough for my staff because I was A-B testing a company, right? Okay. Um, I was saying, hey, let's try this. No, this doesn't work. Let's drop. Let's move. But we're kind of almost there. We're mm. kind of almost there that we kind of know what we are. We've got our data all sorted out. Um, and I think we can scale quite quickly now. All right. So, so let's focus on uh, Big Pay. Mm. Because they recently got a license to KPKT. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's really a, a, a surprise because KPKT never gave out a digital mm. money lending license. Yeah, so, we drove that. that yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so this is really a surprise because that's a, it's a massive change of policy because mm. all the KPKT license before was geographical based, mm. but this is digital based. Mm. And uh, as well as now, Big Pay has remittance license, digital uh, remittance with the EKYC and all that. So share with us a little bit more detail about how the democratization mm. of, of uh, uh, finance in terms of access mm. to credit, especially for the B40, mm. as well as mm. the micro SMEs mm. as the engine for the economy. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you've got to give credit to the ministry. You've got to give credit to the minister, to be honest. Um, I think the laws were done in like 1920 or something. You know, maybe, yes, maybe, that's um, true. That's true. And so, <laughs> so, you know, you had to physically see someone. It had to be yes. in an office. And it took the best part of a year. Um, and we haven't officially been approved yet. We've, we've got a provisional license subject to the tech yes. uh, passing um, the regulators. Uh, and so, you know, it was moving a mountain, to be honest. It is. Uh, and I, to the credit, the minister and the ministry acknowledged Big Pay driving this this forward. It, it, it was great. There were about six or seven of us. Seven I think. others, yeah. Seven others that were, that were getting a license uh, at the same time. Um, and the minister and the government was very clear that this was about financial inclusion, mm. and they, that they wanted us to have the ability to give out to people who maybe couldn't get a loan from a bank. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it, it fits us. Perfectly, uh, it was. We didn't have to be told because that's where our market was going to be. We wanted to be able to provide credit. I'm personally driven by SMEs, yep. um, but we haven't built that product yet. Uh, but within a year, we will, uh, but because I think SMEs are so important to this country. But the B40 also have been a neglected group. I don't even say B40. I say M40, M40 as well, as well yeah. right? Um, and, and so uh, I think with our algorithms or the way we're building, and I think it's very important as well, people have always got access to capital, yeah. but not always the right way of getting capital, mm. if you know what I mean. Yes. B40s can get capital, but they're paying ridiculous amount of interest. Um, and they're being ripped off, really. And, and as we know, sometimes it's very dangerous uh, taking those kind of loans. Yes. So we hope that with us and others, mm -hmm. um, that we will provide a, a fairer, transparent form for B40, M40, or anybody to be able to get a loan within 10, 15 seconds. Um, and technology will enable us to hopefully give the loan uh, with, uh, with a minimum chance of a, of a, of a bad debt. Yep. That's, that's a reality. Okay? Mm. If bad debts go up, then price of interest goes up as well. My goal, just like AirAsia, was about reducing um, the, the cost of flights um, would be to reduce the average cost of interest for small loans, right? So it's about dem democratization, for one, in accessibility yes. and inclusion, but it's also about democratization of interest rates mm. um, and transparency, right? If you look at an insurance contract right now, I know it's not part of your question, or even a, a financial credit agreement, have you ever read it? 
you know, one is in it's in like fine, you know, <laughs> micro fine print. Yeah. You need the Apple magnifying glass to <laughs> to to read it. Yeah. And you know, does anyone really trust their insurance company or their bank? Uh, so in the same way that you know we did it in AirAsia, um, and people will say, oh, I hear you know. I'm sure there'll be many viral jokes on this, but when we at AirAsia, that you know, Harith Iskanda and everyone will tease me about all the extra charges. But actually, it's very fair and transparent. If you want to fly uh, mm. and you don't want food, then you don't pay for it. If yeah. you fly on a full service airline, you think it's free, but it's not. It's in your ticket price. If you fly, uh, you know, and bring seven bags and the person next to you has brought no bags. The guy with seven bags is effectively being subsidized by the guy who brought new ba no bags because I need people to carry those bags to the plane. The bags on the plane weigh yes. and yeah. b burn more fuel, no fuel. Yeah. right? So we've made our pricing very democratic. If you just want a seat, no food, you don't bring bags, uh, you it's don't need all the, it's your choice yeah. and you get the cheapest possible fare. Uh, and that's what we'd like to do in the fintech industry to make it transparent. You know, if you honestly understand buying a life insurance contract in Malaysia, you need to have a PhD like Dr. Rice who writes lots of books. I'm not even sure he understands how life insurance works. <laughs> so, you know, we, we really uh, want to, to make things much more transparent. Um, All right. Just like we did in AirAsia. Mm. Any more? No, no. All right, cool. <laughs> now, the, the, the thing about the thing about getting the license under KPKT, the perception that a lot of people has is that license is really close to the loan shark business mm. because the KPKT license doesn't really being supervised by Bank Negara. They are a separate ministry. And one thing that I know for sure is the enforcement by KPKT is a bit weak compared to how Bank Negara or other financial regulators are supervising. So this is perhaps an area where I'm sure you have thought about it in terms mm. of how the mm. internal controls and supervision yeah. is going to happen. Well, we are obviously on our remittances mm. are regulated by Bank Negara, correct? So we can't have one set of standards here and one set of standards. Right? Secondly, we're not a small brand. Mm -hmm. As you know, if I do anything, it's, it's in it's the newspapers proper, yeah. all over the place in 10 seconds, even when it's not true. So, um, you know, I, I can't comment on the regulation, but I know that we have to set our own standards. Mm -hmm. And was we're in it for the long run. Um, okay. in, in the same way as an airline, we have to try and be as safe as possible. Precisely. You can't guarantee safety. We've lost one aircraft in my 20 years in yeah. Indonesia, which continues to be the worst day of my life. Um, but safety is a marathon. Um, I'm not going to say big pay will not make mistakes, you know, but um, financial regulation and learning and adapting is a marathon as well. Precisely. But I think companies have to rely on their own brand and their own morality mm -hmm to ensure that we do things right. Um, and I think KPKT will do a good job anyway uh, going forward because it's their reputation as well. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. There's a very fine line between over-regulating yes. and killing innovation yes. and under-regulating and the consumer being ripped off. Yeah. But the beauty of today's world is, you know, social media and stuff have really made uh, abuse very transparent. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I err on the caution of over-regulation mm. because abuse will be highlighted in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, blogs, yeah. whatever, in, in, yeah. in 10 seconds, right? Um, you only have to see. For years and years and years, when I was in Amnesty, I talked about uh, foreign laborers' work conditions. This is before any yeah. of this has come out. These are human beings who must be treated properly. I, I've said that. I've, I've talked about prison reform. I've talked about um, the death penalty, etc. Right. So, uh, regulations are there to regulate, but not to kill. But ultimately, you must set your own standards as well.
Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely the value that has been carried by A Asia on this well in terms of creating your own standards and protecting the brand. Mm. So then that's where I'm, I'm segueing into you've been able to nurture your people or mm. your staff mm. into a certain way of behaving and, and conducting themselves to make sure that the brand is protected. Mm. Share with us, how, how does that happen? Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, um, I suppose it starts with the top, right? The, mm. the top. Okay, that's, that's one way to look at it. It has to yeah. be with it. And yeah. If you practice that culture um, of transparency, openness, dialogue. I mean, it, this is a real struggle for AirAsia, by the way, in that this work from home, we're a real people, touchy, feely yep. company, right? Mm. And, you know, not being able to walk around the office and see everyone there and is tough for all of us. And we're, you know, we have a department called the culture department. Mm. Its sole job is to make people happy. Okay. And it's hard to do it when you're Zooming and people are in different countries and they can't fly and yeah. see you and yeah. stuff. So this has been a challenge for us as an organization. But... You know, basically people join AirAsia knowing what the culture is, right? And, you know, if you want to wear a suit and a tie, you know, then you join MDEC. If you want to, if you want to, uh, if no, you no, want no, to they, they don't a, wear a tie. You can see the chairman is not wearing tie. Because they know I'm here. <laughs> um, but if they, if they, if you want a culture which is a bit, as we are, you attract that kind of person, right? Mm. Um, and I think uh, we built a culture where we delegate and we empower. You know, Catherine, who runs our food business, was my EA, and she's done an incredible job. Uh, we have boys and girls who carried bags for us, who are now pilots. Yep. Um, so people know the kind of organization. They're proud to be in that organization. And uh, they, they are proud to carry that brand. Um, and, you know, I think the biggest testament to us is that we have 24,000 staff now, a little bit less, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, that we have never had a union. We've never had an industrial relation. So I mean, sweet. we've had to let go of a lot of staff, which is after Indonesia, the most painful thing for me to do. And I'm determined to hire them all back. But not one, not one person has written anything bad. Anything, every note I've got has been you know, we understand and we've loved our time and we hope you'll hire us back. Uh, so I think, you know, you set a culture and people either buy into that culture or they don't. Uh, and yeah, we, and we got amazing energy, you know, mm. that just keeps going. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy sometimes working for me because I, I say we go here, then we change here, then we go this direction. And, and uh, we have a very malleable workforce. And I think that's, that's the strength of AirAsia. Okay, let, let's get into a, a little bit more strategy in terms of managing capital. Mm. Because now the airline is transitioning mm. and it has to be kept afloat. Mm. And now you're also going in a big way mm. into mm. the mm. digital business. Sure, finance. where are we getting the money from? Yes. Well, if you walk outside here, there'll be a collection. <laughs> okay. Um, which we hope MDate will contribute to. Uh, I'm only joking. Oh, I, I, do, I am really enjoying this interview. I hope you can see that because you're asking me great stuff. Number one, we built this airline. Me and Cameroon had half a million ringgit to yes. start AirAsia, right? And we built what we built with half a million. I mean, there were a lot of people who said, I had sugar daddy, sugar mummy. It would have been nice to have had a sugar mummy. <laughs> Um, but you know that we we had all these mystery funders and you know AK everyone thought was an under Christian right and I didn't pick AK DRB Highcom did unfortunately for me AA was American Airlines AB yeah. was someone else was AC was Air Canada <laughs> and the first A they they DRB Highcom found that was available was AK so everyone thought an under Christian was my sugar daddy um, which wasn't the case at all. So we've come from a culture of, we don't have money. I sat there and thought, wow, how are these companies justifying burning billions of ringgit, right? Yep. 
but they had sugar daddies, whether it was SoftBank, whether it was these PE firms. And so give it to me, I'll spend it, right? Now, my grandmother can do that. If you've given $3 billion and then you give free delivery, 50% off your food, who can't build a business like that, right? I mean, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, and why do national airlines, how can AirAsia, who hasn't received a cent from any state, be able to grow as we are? And then other airlines who, who around the world owned by the state are burning billions of mm. dollars, right? Yes. So I believe we don't have to burn money to build our digital business. Because I'll rephrase your question. You don't have much money in the airline. How are you going to build a digital business? Yeah. That's what you're really asking me about in a very roundabout yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, because you thought I'd get insulted, which I won't. <laughs> um, so, but we never built businesses with lots of cash. And the airline business is a great example of how we built an airline with 245 planes, starting with 500,000 ringgit of capital, mm. right? Mm. So what do we have now? We have all the education of MDEC, FOB, whatever. We've learned from all of you, right? From Grab, Gojek, Shopee, whatever. Um, it's the other way around, right? When I started AirAsia, then every, every animal came in, right? Lion, tigers, insects, yeah. firefly, yeah. everyone. Everyone joined the fun, right? This time I learned from everyone else, okay? And, and so we don't have that capital in of building mm. that everyone else, because we just take the best, right? I mean, AirAsia, Dot com looks like any other super app, but that wasn't our idea. We took it from all the other great companies out there that spent billions building it, right? Number two, we have something called a brand. People know us. Yeah. We don't have to spend hundreds of millions to tell people AirAsia.com. We have to spend money to tell people we're doing more than the flights, but that's less expensive. Yep. Number three, I have customers already, mm. right? We have 75 million customers already. Uh, we have 35 million loyalty members already. We have 25 million contactable addresses already. That's what a lot of capital was spent in building that. So none of our digital businesses, bar big pay, is losing money. Mm. Teleport is profitable. AirAsia.com is profitable. Santan is profitable. Yep. Uh, big Life, our loyalty program, is profitable. Big pay isn't because there's a negative carry on interest rates. Yep. And we're, we're not interest rate on, on the uh, interchange. Sure. And we're trying to talk to Bank Nagara about that. Uh, so we don't believe we require loads and loads of cash. That's my biggest kind of thing to tell people mm. that we're not going to need a lot of cash to build this business. Big pay is if you take away the interchange, we spend $15 million and we have a million customers. I don't think there's any fintech business that has that kind of capital investment in terms of the number of customers. Our GTVs is $80 million a month, mm. right? And we don't double count and all this other interesting ways that some of your members count. Not my members. Uh, but we're joining you anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I thought Foam was like a massage parlor association. We, we, are, we, you know? we wanted to do that, uh, <laughs> but we didn't get the license yet. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, MDEC's never going to invite me back again. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'm probably more fun than most of your hosts. Without no, yeah, Everyone, without, without, yeah. Everyone's very serious. So, so, so now, <laughs> uh, you're, you're known to invest in different type of businesses, asset class, and, and different verticals. I've heard that now uh, digital media is on the cards. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell us yeah, about so, it. So, yeah. um, It's my background, number one. Yes, that's number yeah. That's but let me tell you the reason behind it, because it sounds nuts. Why are, why are we doing that? So if you think about all the, you talk about burning cash. Um, spending on Google, Facebook, and all is, is probably, so you see a lot of tech companies says we're profitable before marketing costs. Yeah, EBITDA yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> okay. five, five, yes. EBITDA minus the M, so Correct. EBITDA M, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, earnings before everything you don't like and then you call it cash flow. Um, we think that it's really important that we build our own channels, mm. right? <clears throat> so channels can come from your own content. Channels can come from your own messenger. We have our own messenger now. We haven't 
publicly released it, but we have a million people already on there. Um, uh, we obviously have our own channels uh, through various social sites, etc. So the content is all about driving people to our own channels to avoid spending a lot of money. Right? Mm. So if you think of your thousand members on phone, their biggest challenge is going to be getting to be known. Yes. In this very, very crowded world of media, yeah. which has become more and more expensive. And it's so counter cyclical, the more you spend on Google, the more expensive it gets. Right, it's it's uh, it's that's that's their model, right? Yeah, it's it's a demand and supply model. So um, it goes back to your earlier question. I'm very conscious of all the ways of burning cash, and so creating media um, is one way of avoiding having your own channels to be able to promote your own products on. Yep, I mean that 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 really align with the storytelling part that you mentioned earlier mm. about making sure that the brand is known not only for the airlines, but also for other stuff. Yeah, so I mean, we have our own record company out now. Are we going to be <laughs> a massive record company? No, right? Of course not. Um, we have one artist. She's got a great song produced by Ariana's producer. Um, it enables us to use her to promote some of our own products. But more importantly, it gets us into the media world to do many other things. Mm. So, you know, with, with Aaron, and we've created something called Hola, where you get celebrity endorsements. We're working with Universal on many, many great things. Uh, we're looking at tying up with a, a Thai and Indonesian company for content mm. to be able to give them a bigger platform, right? Um, and so my mind works in many strange ways. The record, the single artist has opened us up to huge content opportunities, okay. which then can be uh, used to drive our own ecosystem. Okay. So, so talking about that, what one area that I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in is because Malaysia, Indonesia, largely the Muslim nation. Any share with us your view about Islamic finance? Yeah. So, um, you know, Kamran and my partner is, is obviously Muslim, and we have created something called Iklas, uh, which right now is, is, is more on Islamic functions digitally, but eventually we'll go into Islamic finance. Mm. AirAsia, again, was the pioneer in Islamic leasing. Precisely. We created the Islamic leasing market out of Labuan. Yes. Uh, we're the largest and in Islamic loans for aircraft. We... Uh, we created that market, or yeah. Kamarudin did. Yeah. So, uh, yes, for sure we will be in that because we're flying to the largest Muslim populations in, in the world, yes. right? So, uh, E-Class will, will definitely be uh, a provider of uh, Islamic finance and Islamic insurance. Yeah, yeah, because, because uh, okay, now that actually being said, so now that's the opportunity of having both conventional and Islamic, uh, the Sharia compliant part within the business, which opens up a bigger opportunities uh, to all the stakeholders yeah. that, that's related to Asia. So then when we talk about converting the 600 million guests that has been on the airline mm. with millions that's already in your uh, data repository. How is that actually, in, in my mind, thinking in terms of converting and optimizing that mm. opportunity? Mm. Well, through, that's the trick. Yeah, through that's, the super app. That's the, that's the Colonel Saunders trick, right? Okay. <laughs> in fact, we, I, I go after this, this talk to, to have a meeting on conversion and mm. the right data structure, um, you know, the right knowledge graph, uh, all, all these things, right? So we have a customer intelligence system that we call Cyro, oh. which we've been working on for the best part of a year now, together with Google, um, initially with Palantir. And now uh, we, we've got lots of data sources from, from everywhere and how to improve that predictability, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's all about conversion now. Yes. Now we've built it, it's all about conversion. And so uh, that is the, the secret source that we are, you know, getting all the data stitched together, getting it latent, mm. um, as, as live as possible, 
and giving the consumer a great experience, right? So that is what we've been uh, working on, and that is the secret sauce. But um, while everyone is fixated on, on data and AI and stuff, it is very important not to forget the old world of marketing and promotion, right? Yes. Um, you know, being able to tell my market that we're the cheapest for remittances anywhere in the world. Uh, being able to tell my market that we will give you the best interest rate. Mm. Uh, whether it's a billboard, whether it's through an orbit talk, whether it's through um, uh, conventional marketing. So I, I would urge all companies involved with MDEC that it's not just about Facebook and Google. Yeah. Conventional marketing, PR, you know, getting out, doing interviews such as this uh, is as important uh, as... Uh, optimizing SEO and SEM. Okay, uh, I think uh, we are about at the end of the... Just before we leave... Uh, that was the alarm, was it? <laughs> <laughs> MDEC alarm. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so sh share with us, uh, since you said that Asia is always a startup, or at least the, the mindset is always that, yeah. how, how do you advise or give tips to those out there who, who are constantly thinking about starting or already started. Mm. And the second part is, how do they get the opportunity to be collaborating with yeah. AirAsia? So, collaborating with AirAsia, you can email Lim Benji. Okay. L-I-M. How do you spell your name, Benji? B-E-N-J-I-E <laughs> at AirAsia.com. Okay. Um, and uh, he effectively runs AirAsia right now. So email him. Uh, we look at everything. A lot of our collaborations have come from people cold calling me. All right. Number one. And we really welcome it. Um, I'm not saying that because I'm, we really welcome it because we think they're great ideas. And I will never... AirAsia is a culmination of loads and loads of great ideas from mm -hmm. all over the place. Advice to, to, to entrepreneurs, look... I hate doing that because I think I haven't achieved that much yet. But throughout this interview, I've been, I've been talking about branding. Yes. Okay, I think it's really important that you promote yourselves. Um, too many great ideas no one ever hears about. That's mm. number one. Mm. Number two, focus. Mm. Know your strengths. Um, go pick a product that people want, not that you like. Mm -hmm product that people want and that makes your job a lot easier. If I go through, um, is that the second warning bell? Uh, or is that the doorbell? We, we basically, if I go back to my music business, you start with a great song. Mm. Now, if you have a great song but no one who can sing the song, you're in trouble. Yeah. You have a great artist but no song, you're in trouble. So you start with a great product and you start with a product that people want. Mm. Okay, the Koreans have been incredible with creating music that people want. Yes. The next thing in this mark in this whole cycle of of building a business is making sure people know about it, mm. marketing and promotion, yes. and finally how to buy it. So going back to your point, I think number one, branding and marketing, make a product that people want, mm -hmm. and then finally surround yourself with great people. Mm. Don't think it's all about yourself. Precisely. Too many entrepreneurs think it's all about them. It's all about a great team. And listen to your team mm. and build it. Be confident. Be positive. You know, I, I should be the most negative person in the world right now with what I've gone through. <laughs> but I'm incredibly positive. And uh, I'm positive because of the people that I'm surrounded with. Mm. And when I, when I come to Orbit and I see startups and I see you know, people energized and excited. And you, know, you tell me there are a thousand fintech companies in yep. Malaysia. Yep. That's incredible, yep. you know, and that's exciting. Uh, I went to our academy where we've started a digital academy to train people, not only in AirAsia, but outside. And there were 20 Mara startups there mm. learning on how to brand and market. And I was blown away by the energy of these housewives selling makeup, um, people selling instant noodles, uh, it was really encouraging to see that male makeup, etc. So uh, there is energy in this in this part. 
uh, build businesses that are cash positive. Mm. I think it's almost counter cyclical that the more you spend and the more you lose, your valuation went up uh, <laughs> yeah. more. Uh, but I feel it's important. I'm an old fashioned guy that build businesses that can generate cash. Then you don't rely on anyone, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and finally have fun. Uh, you know, yeah, I think the great thing about being an entrepreneur is being able to control and being able to influence and to make a difference. Treat your staff well, enjoy what you're doing, stand back in a few years and be proud of what you've built. Never let anyone tell you you're wrong. Because if they were telling you they're wrong, then they would have done it themselves. You know, if I, if I could get 50 ringgit for everyone who told me I was mad to start an airline, Actually, they might be right right now, <laughs> um, but you know, pre-COVID, I think we look smart to start an airline, yes, and definitely. I think we are smart to start an airline because we created twenty-four thousand jobs, yes, three hundred and fifty thousand associated jobs, and we've made millions happy. They've flown to places they never dreamt they would fly to, uh, so we don't regret for one moment, and we look forward to this post-COVID world, and we look forward to. Um, AirAsia and its super app and trying to bring democracy and trying to bring more energy to this space and, and um, more inclusivity. Thank you, Tanshri, for that. That's really, uh, just before we go, how was the experience being a delivery man? Oh, I haven't done it yet. Um, I just took my license. Okay. So uh, I passed. <laughs> and... Uh, but I might start, I, I did send a message to my guys today. I saw a girl on a scooter today, a uh, foot pedal. And since I've taken up cycling, I may start off delivering. You know, you see all these super cool guys in London and Korea and all these uh, riding bicycles at yeah. 90 miles an hour with uh, food delivery. So uh, I don't quite look like them yet, <laughs> but maybe uh, I will start my delivery business on a, on a bicycle. Um, I'm excited. Look, I love new things. Mm. I love meeting people. I love surprising people. Um, and so I look forward to being a delivery guy. I started carrying bags in AirAsia. Yep. I was a flight attendant. Mm. Um, I've done everything. So I don't think you can be an effective leader unless you're prepared to go onto the ground mm. and really know what your staff go through. I think so I delivery see. guys are the heroes right now in the world. And I don't think they're treated great. So hopefully we can, we can try and treat them better. But if I had to do what they do, then I really know what it's like, yeah. you know? And so got to walk the talk. Yeah. Um, so I might start off in a cycle. I've got my scooter ready. All right. I, I, don't, I don't know how to ride a motorbike. So I've got an electric scooter. It's red. Um, it's quite quick. Got the yeah. basket at the back. All right. So yeah, order on AirAsia food and you know, you might be the I might be the delivery guy, and please don't ask me for a refund on AirAsia. <laughs> okay. Honestly, there's there's a lot of people who wants me to ask me, you that question. They can ask. Yeah. I, I have to say that we we are look, we're in a tough situation. We're going to get out of it. I think our staff, our passengers have been incredible. You only hear the people complaining. Eighty six percent of AirAsia passengers have taken a credit show. Yes. And that is an incredible testament to the loyalty of our customers. 14% um, we're going through and paying back people. And of course, some are making a lot of noise. Yep. And it's always the guys a lot. But, you know, I've got so many pressures on me. I've got to look after staff. I've got to pay salaries. I've got to keep the company afloat. Exactly. I've got to pay creditors. And so I've got to balance many things. Yes. So, you know, we really appreciate the 86. We understand it's your money. And we, we're getting to it. We will get to it. Um, up to this point, we've had no financing from anybody, so we're living off what we're doing. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're not running away with your money, those 14%, yep. but I appreciate all the 86% who believe in us and you know, want, to, want to support us in that way. Um, but you know, for those on refunds, soon we're going to be able to transfer some of your refunds to food and other things on our super app, so you can use some of your refund money to uh, yeah. buy, a, buy a Santan meal, and I'll deliver it for you, if I haven't eaten it on the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Tan Sri Tony, uh, for such a wonderful discussion with you today. I hope that uh, our audience have learned a lot in terms of uh, looking at new perspective in running companies and understanding how Asia is balancing uh, what they have and what they're going to do going forward. And hopefully, we will be able to also uh, learn from the experience that uh, Tan Sri Tony and his team, uh, whatever that they have done well so far. And uh, thank you for your time today for uh, this session. And hopefully, we're going to meet uh, in another session in future going forward. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you. Bye, bro. We're joining phone, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.